Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about are the different styles of lettering. And I have listed here on the board block, script, Old English, and Pearl Roman. These are the common styles of the engraver. There are quite a number of different types of lettering, but these are the most popular. And we'll start with the block lettering first. Block lettering is is quite deceptive at times, one of probably the most difficult styles to, to learn to lay out and to execute with accuracy, uh, simply because there are a lot of optical illusions in block lettering. We're going to start out here with some parallel lines, which is the basis for all of your block lettering layout. And we're going to start discussing the reasons that block either looks good or looks bad. The optical illusion that I was speaking of were in cases where you have two letters together, which, which you can't put up close to each other the cause of their confirmation and they leave a hole in the or a gap in the lettering for instance an l and a t and if we use mechanical spacing which means that we use the same amount of space between the letters in every case then we have We'll have an optical illusion here, so we you cannot use mechanical spacing in block lettering at all. You have to use visual spacing. <clears throat> I'm gonna apply a letter over here next to the L at the same distance that the L is from the T mechanically spaced, and I'll show you the optical illusion I'm talking about. Now, in this case, the B and the L seem very close together when there's a great big hole in the, between the L and the T. And uh, in order to compensate for this, we eliminate mechanical spacing and apply visual spacing. In other words, we'd have to move this T over quite far to make up the difference and to make it pleasing. A lot of times, this will almost overlap. And you'll have to allow with your other letters, you'll have to compensate for that difference between all of your letters. In other words, you might have to move the B over a little further so that it will harmonize with this space here. Then your spacing would be more like. Now you can see that these two areas are much more alike than this little small and narrow space in here. In order to make this letter fit with this th these three, we would have to move it over. 
to agree with the space between these two letters, which would be more like. Now those letters are all evenly spaced, even though these two letters seem to be much closer together, this empty space here is more equivalent to the two on either side of it, which makes it more balanced and more pleasing. So it's the space between the letters that space you look between. at visually? Yeah. And try to make it approximately the same size? Right. Okay. Now I'm going to take and, and lay out a name of this situation in both methods of mechanical spacing and visual spacing, so that you can see the difference. And this is where most most people make their mistake in lettering. The I'm going to do the first one, the mechanical place. <clears throat> and although I've left approximately the same distance, between this letter and these letters, there seems to be a large hole, which gives you a big empty space between the letters, and it almost looks like two different words. To remedy that problem, we'll do it now with visual spacing. Uh, a is somewhat of an open letter, too, because it'll create a hole right up here in this area. So we have to also allow for an A. Notice how I move the T way over. The difference, yeah, I can see the difference. It's it looks more, much more like one word rather than two. Right. It's, it's balanced out more appealing to the eye because there's a rhythm in it, and this is what makes block lettering look ragged. Is you break that rhythm. Another way that you break the rhythm is in the, in the height of the letter. It's not obvious to see mistakes when, you, when you've got guidelines to indicate the height of the letter. 
but uh, <clears throat> when you remove this line, this guideline, then you begin to see that some of the letters appear or ha appear to be taller than others, particularly if you use a Roman style block letter because this particular style, this is Gothic block, doesn't show that up near as readily as uh, as uh, Roman style. And I'll explain some of the reasons for that here in just a minute. I don't want to show you what happens when you remove the, the guidelines. You begin to see these holes even more obvious and flaws in your lettering. And a lot of engravers wonder why their lettering looks weird and they'll do the job and they'll they'll cut the cut the lettering in and then they'll wipe off the guidelines and they say oh no you know look it looks terrible and that's the reason this is an obvious blank open space a void that uh, shows up so they get discouraged with it and quit but uh, in proper spacing proper visual spacing you have a much more pleasing balanced effect and this can happen between lots of letters then oh yeah you got, a, you got a sentence you've got to you've got to uh, lay that sentence out it's a whole line of words according to the spaces between your letters uh like uh you've got l's and t's together or or uh, a's and y's and and let me uh show you some of the letters that will give you some problem some of the the problem letters, and I'll explain why they're problems. We have three or four different kinds of letters uh, in the block alphabet. I call a one-sided. These are my these are my own terms, so uh, my own way of trying to explain this. But a I is a one-sided letter simply because it has one stem to indicate the whole letter. An H is what I would call a two-sided letter because it has two, ten, two stems to indicate the width of the letter. A w, I would call a four-sided letter because it's got almost two complete widths of letter for its width. This will give you a lot of problems in monogramming where you have a W on one side of your monogram and an I on the other, you have to learn how to compensate for these two very different types of letters. An M is what I call a one-sided letter. A V is kind of a half-sided a letter because these areas down in here create voids. A Y do the same thing. You have two holes inside, and these will show up anywhere you put another letter uh, next to it, particularly a T. Or you've got an automatic hole right there. So you have to generally scoot this Y very close to the T. And, and put the other ones away from the T, the B or whatever it is, to allow or to compensate for this hole. Okay, and you said that the M was a what-sided letter? It's a, it's a one-sided letter. It's a little wider than an H generally, but, but not much. And okay. it doesn't create any optical illusion particularly, except for its own width. Uh, okay. I try to keep it pretty much in keeping with the width of the other letters, even though it even though it's a little wider letter normally, and you'll see it quite commonly in print, somewhat wider than the rest of your letters, but I will try to maintain uniformity in the width of my letters, regardless of what they are, whether they're an M, W, or, or a B, or whatever, I try to uh, make them all pretty much the same width. And you, that, that's violated quite often. And if you want to try to create rhythm, balance then uh, try and keep your letter the same size even the W even though the W has four distinct vertical lines to make in its makeup 
I will, I will narrow those lines down in order to try to keep that more in a in the size of the rest of the letters and not have it so obviously outstanding. That it doesn't overshadow the rest. So it's balanced and not dominating in one particular no one dominating letters. A lot of times, like I say, it's quite common to see this in uh, commercial print. You'll see you'll see a letter this width, and then you'll see a great big W in there, you know, and it, it doesn't fit, but uh, you'll see it a lot. But if you want if you want good rhythmic pleasing lettering, then this is the secret to it. Keep all your letters the same size. You want particularly where you have one B in the name or in that whole line or in your whole inscription, uh, where you have one B, you want the other B to be precisely the same size as the other B. That's important too. Or where you have an A or a W or any, any of the same size letters. These are particularly hard to do where you've got this, these divided into two segments and you want these segments to be precise. You don't want to have a B with a division right here on this this B and one up here on this B. And you'll that's some of the common errors that are made in in uh, beginning engravers. Uh, E's and and that sort of thing are so characteristic that it's easy to get one quite a bit wider than another one you have in the same name and it shows. You want to have your ease as closely matching as you possibly can. So you have to really pay close attention as you lay out your letters that you're keeping those ease at the same size. Those aren't exactly right, but they're pretty close. Another thing is that the smaller your lettering is, the more your flaws show up. And uh, for instance, your horizontal lines, uh, engraver will lay out his design, he'll cut it in metal, and then he'll then he'll erase his guidelines and it'll look terrible. It'll look ragged and uneven and and uh, he won't understand why. Uh, first of all, a lot of engravers start out with a, a Roman style letter, which is uh, vertical stems, round, yeah, that's Roman. Uh, and you usually have serifs, which are little corners on the letters like this. Okay, and then within the Roman text or alphabet, you've got what we call flat top letters. The E is an example of. And we have round. This is a rather flat top letter actually except that it's creates an optical illusion in this spot right here you know right where the where it comes up the line so it does it does cause a slight problem not much but you'll see the problem when you erase the lines you won't see it so much away as long as you've got guidelines now one of the major things is your o you can do that o you can get it right on the line and you know for a fact that that o is the same size is these same height as these two letters right here because you came down to the line with it and you know it's the same height okay um, let's put, a, put another O here okay now let's put a Now that looks like that's pretty well laid out. Let me show you what happens when we take out the guideline. Guidelines tend to tie the whole thing all together and make it conform to a space. When you remove the guidelines, 
everything kind of falls apart. What happened? Now, these two seem to be all by themselves, all alone in that space. They don't, they don't match in height, and uh, we create an optical illusion there. Well, Roman block is the hardest to do for this reason. Because we have to have the experience, you know, how far above the line to go, how to allow for these areas right in here, in order to be able to create that, create that, that style and make it look proper. So how would you correct it? All right, the way to correct that is you must compensate for the for the optical illusion. You have to go slightly. And again, experience teaches you this, and I don't recommend any engraver starts out on the Roman style letter. You have to go above or across that line just a little bit to allow for that that optical illusion. Him doesn't write well over. Ink that's already been there. being very successful it's not riding over the anyway that's that's the way to solve the problem that uh, this is an advanced form of lettering and I would much recommend the gothic style block simply because you have very definite height indicators by applying your serifs across the tops of your letters which uh, applies to the B the O I would be laid out That. You have a definite height indicator in the O, in any of the round top letters, D, be done very precisely, and they all look exactly the same height. You don't have these this problem, this roundness creating problems within work. Would the S and the G and all those be round tops? Yes, the S, the G, uh, C. C, P, D, uh, where in the Roman letters you would create your D. That, in, in the Gothic style, that. The, you, what you've done is you've confused the height indicator in this letter. And in this, the height indicator is very famous. Match up with whatever letter you've got next to it in height, and you won't get a distortion there. Are there any more questions, Bill, about the block lettering styles? Or can we go on to script? No, I think that's that'd be fine. Let's go on to the script now, and then later on, we'll, I'm sure you'll show me about cutting block.